Okay, so since there wasn't a study hall the Friday I said I was going to record this video, I totally forgot about it until Victoria mentioned it. Um, I'm using a new recording software, so hopefully this works out. I'm hoping that this means I don't have to use Annotate anymore, which would be amazing. Um, so it looks like it's working out fine. I have this pen option here. Um, hopefully you guys can see it okay. Otherwise, um, I'll, I mean, I'll check it out in the video. But let's finish off this. I'm going to use Nelson's uh, thumbnail, which I'm sure you guys already see, but I'm just talking to myself, so I don't really know what to say here. Um, I guess you can see it if I'm using the mouse, but let's carry on. So consider the formula for future interest. So this is going to be when we're talking about interest rates. Um, so the P is going to be our principal, what we start off with. The I is our interest rate. So uh, it's going to be in decimal form. And this is how many times it's compounded. So whenever we're talking about that, um, so if it's monthly, like let's say it's a monthly interest rate, we're going to do, um, we're going to have to divide it by 12. So let's say like three years pass, um, but let's say it's compounding monthly, or we might talk about that later. I'm not sure how Edmonton's going to do this here, but we'll see how it goes. Okay. Um, so, so far it looks pretty interesting using this, especially since I don't have to use annotate. So let's see. And most trans file. All right. So let's get into the actual problem for this. Let me go back to mouse mode. All right. So here's an example. So this is what I was talking about before. It does compound. Uh, monthly, so they're going to divide it. So that's going to affect the interest rate, not the end. N affects how many times we're compounding it. So since this problem is talking about two years, or 10 years, sorry, 10 years, that means that, oh, I'm liking this right now. <laughs> um, that means it's going to compound this many times. So that's going to affect our interest, but not our N. All right, and the one thing that I didn't mention was this minus one. We have to do the minus one, otherwise it's going to be a lot of money that keeps compounding over and over again. So you do subtract the one because of the fact that you don't want to keep increasing that payment over and over and over again, and we're already including it right here with the principal. So let's get going. All right, so a house payment is a great example of this. So usually what they're saying here is uh, when you're paying your mortgage. So they took out this much money, $230,000 in mortgage. All right, and you want to do an initial, down, initial payment. So we already did an initial payment uh, before they give you the loan. In this case, it's 10%. So they're just calculating the principal, what we're doing here. All right. So they figured out the principal. So this is how much the loan is. So they we figured out how much we start off with. And then this is how much the loan is for. So from here, what we're going to do is we need to figure out our interest rate. So the interest rate is 3.6% and it compounds monthly. So no matter what, that's going to be what we're going to get charged for interest. So we calculate the monthly rate. So they're going to divide it by 12. So we get this 0.3%. So that means our I, well, they're going to explain it right now, but that means our I is 0 0.003 because it's in, this is percent. We want it in decimal. And we want it for 30 years, so that's 360. So that's what they're doing there. And that's how they calculate this. Oh, um, I don't, for some reason they didn't calculate that minus one from the formula. I don't know why they're giving us a formula here. Oh, this was the formula for when we're talking about savings. Duh. 
future value. All right, so let's get into this as a formula for debt. Oh, yeah, there it is. There's a minus one. How come it wasn't included over here? They did that. They did the expo. Oh, okay. We're still working the problem. So the amount that would be that would have in savings account. So this is just talking about the savings. So I don't know why we're talking about savings when we're talking about mortgage. So here we're talking about future value. Next, the mortgage company determines how much money it would earn. Oh, we're calculating earning. My bad, guys. Edmentum just has a weird way of teaching this stuff. So we're talking about how much money the mortgage company is doing. All right, so let's get in on this. So we're going to calculate that, and we have to subtract this. So this is just figuring out the principal value here. So installment. So they're calculating how much they want this the installments to be. So they're calculating the P. So let's get going here. Oops, wrong one. All right. So in order to figure out the future value, how much money we're going to get after a while. So now let's derive the general formula for calculating the monthly payment. So this is how a mortgage company would calculate, calculate their monthly payment. All right, so let's move on over here. So we would take the future value structured savings plan for the recurring payment. So this is how uh, the recurring payment would be calculated. Did they mention where they got that nine from? They did not mention how they got that nine. Well then, oh wait, 900, all right. Let's get going here. Moving on. So two, two, two. we're going to do that. So we get a negative. They're going way too deep in here. So here's the payment. So we have to do the future value here let's get going into an actual problem okay so we're going to be comparing interest rates in these cars i don't know why we went into calculating the mortgage payments and mentum's weird if you guys ever need formulas they're right here the way mentum teaches is too weird for my blood all right so let's get into this so dealership a this is the car payment here and that's our interest rate uh, this is how much the car costs at the next dealer, but they have a higher interest rate. So we're going to try to figure out. We're going to determine the monthly payments and decide which one's better. So both loans are for five years. Okay. Assume there's no down payment. So, okay. So our principal, let's get our geometric formulas here. So monthly payment, we need to figure out what the future value is. So the loan amount and the fixed monthly payment. So we don't know what the fixed monthly payment is. We know the interest rate and we know the number of payments. So I'm just going to copy this right here. Can I select it? Nope, it's being mean. <laughs> so let me just type it in here. So just so we can see the formula when we're doing it and i'm going to do a fraction f subscript and i'm going to multiply it by the interest and i'm going to divide this by one minus parentheses one plus i parentheses to the power of negative n. So again, guys, have this printed out. I don't expect you guys to take this test without having the formulas printed out. All right, so let's do this here. 
So now we need to, oops, I subscript that I did not want that I subscript, guys. Into the subscript and get out of the subscript. There we go. All right, let's figure out this paint. All right, so for the first formula, I'm going to copy, like, copy this. And I'm going to put amount of the loan. So that will be this 30,000. The interest would be point. Zero four eight. And again, I'm going to put the interest over here. So again, that's point zero four eight. Number of payments. This is a five year loan, and they're nice enough to put the 60 months. Usually, a Ventum is not that nice. Put that in here. So we have a nice little formula here. Normally, I would say solve this all on its own. But we're going to use Desmos to just plug the whole formula in because Desmos actually has a pretty nice um, scientific calculator. Let's go to Desmos. Um, go to my scientific calculator here. This is a fraction, so I'm going to start off with the division sign. And honestly, I'm curious if Desmos would understand if I just copied this. Let me see if I could just. Copy this and see if uh, Desmos understands. It does not. I think I tried this in my algebra class, so I don't know why I'm trying this now. So let's do my fraction. Move this over so it's easier. 30,000. So I'm going to go here. 30, 300, 3,000. Good job. And then the interest. So interest, I'm going to put that here, 0 0.048, close that. Underneath, I'm going to put 1 minus, one plus point zero four eight. What are you doing? And the exponent is right here. So I'm going to make power. Oops. Desmos, why do you hate me? I said momentum, now Desmos. There we go. Power, negative 60. And this should answer the question outright. Nope, because Desmos hates me. There we go. So I'm getting 1,531. We're going to round this. So 1,531 and 95 cents. And I'm just going to plug this in here. So let's hit enter. Let's see what it says. And that's the first one, by the way. I haven't done the second one. Did I forget something in my formula? I did that. I did that. Hmm. What did I forget here? That's there. That's there. I don't know why you're chasing me here, Desmos. Let's see here. Desmos, what are you doing? Did I put the wrong interest rate? I didn't. I forgot to divide by 12. Hmm. Well, that sucks. <laughs> All right, interesting enough, guys, as I'm testing out the pause feature, so I'll have to see how that pause work. So I messed up. I even mentioned it when we were doing the problem. I totally forgot to divide by the number of periods. So this is 4. This is 4 because 48 divided by 12 is 4. So that is totally going to change this problem. Luckily, Desmos lets you kind of 
fix this. And you'll see what that 0.8% does over 10 years. Or five, five years, five years. This is the mortgage. So as you see here, that's a thousand. Still not enough. I'm trying to see what I missed here. I believe I used their formula correctly. Let me see here. Principal times the interest. Principal times the interest. Okay. Um, ba -ba -ba. And, or I should say final price times the interest. And one minus one two, 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 times the number of payments. So if I want to make this a little better, I can just do that because the plus makes it the same. Enter it. I don't think the loan payment should be that much. Mostly payments for a loan. Mm -hmm. Where did I miss? this okay so we're doing the first one thirty thousand did i do too many zeros thirty thousand no n is number of payments that's 60 that's right mm -hmm. oh forgot a zero here okay And the zero here. There we go. So that was me just forgetting to divide still. I didn't divide correctly because obviously it's not 40 when you divide by 12. It's 4. Um, so just to kind of use my on-screen thing here a little bit more, what I did was I did this 0 0.048 and I divided by 12 and it's really 0 0.004. But I kind of just left that there. So that was still me forgetting to divide. So that's how we're going to get this for uh, five, five, six, three, thirty nine. So I'm going to edit this to over here. And I'm going to edit that to five. 3.49, get that going. All right, cool. And now I'm basically going to do the same thing for the other car loan. Oops, I need to edit the equation, otherwise this would be wrong. Zero. Zero. I'm going to put the OK. Let's copy this formula. Enter it here. And now I'm just changing the variables, essentially. So let me edit this. This car loan starts off cheaper. I think it's only like it's 200 bucks cheaper, but we'll see how that 200 bucks means nothing when the interest rate is that much different. So let me learn from my past mistake and I'm gonna divide 0 0.054 by 12. And that's going to give me 0 0.0045. So again, there's not that much different between these two loans as far as the payments or as far as the interest goes. It seems like it's very small. 0.5% interest. 0.05% interest a month. So let's see how that difference makes. So let's go here. Uh, let me erase this. Eraser here. All right, and then I'm going to edit this. So luckily in using, I really recommend this Desmos calculator. I'm getting more used to it now, and I really like it. So let's change that to five, change that to five. This went down by, I believe it only went down by 200 bucks. Yeah, literally 200 bucks. They're trying to appease you going like hey it's only it's 200 bucks less you're saving money but that interest rate look at that 567.84 i'm just gonna copy that so five 
67.84. So you are going to pay more monthly there. And over time, that's going to add up. So let's see how much this adds up. How much would be able to pay off the loan, lower monthly payment, by setting aside 200 bucks each month? So now we're going to pretend that she's making a completely different payment. So her payment's going to be different. So a value of the loan, and we're going to kind of switch these payments around. So how much would she be able to pay off? So we're going to have to use, how come it doesn't have that loan thing? Boop, boop, boop. All right, we got the future value. Um, ba, ba, ba. Where is that formula? I use formulas all the time, guys. So again, that's why this is better to use these formulas. Future value structure. Okay, so P would be the fixed monthly rate. So we're just going to adjust that P. So we're going to use this future value formula. Savings plan. Da, da, da. Future value of investment. Are we just going to use future value savings plan? Ah, Mentum, why you do this to me? <laughs> Let's take a look here. So future value of investment. I swear Mentum does a terrible job explaining this. I can go into the math, but I don't want to take forever and I don't want them to have this completely different than what I, what they want you to learn it as. So let's take a look here. I honestly just think Inventum's just really bad at teaching exponents. Let's see here, loan amounts, loan amount is that much, monthly interest rate is that much. Some, oh, that's right, duh. We're gonna use that one formula that we did over here. So this formula, which we already did, so SN. So I'm just going to use this formula, and I'm just going to type it in to our work. So give me a sec. I'm going to use the snippet tool so it's easier for me to just see it on my second screen. Move this over here. That way I can just type it in all easy. And I think we even have it over Yep, We had it right here. Sorry, guys. Bad short-term memory happens when you're older. All right. So doo -doo -doo. I'm all acting like there's another tab. Again, bad short-term memory. OK. So let's get down to this. So we're going to use the formula here. We're going to do that. S sub n, meaning the sum of the payments equals, da, da, da. we're going to do principal, so this will be our monthly payment. We're going to do the 1 plus the interest, so for the first one, our interest, oh, let me just type in the formula and then we'll do it. Do the interest, do this, and to the power of n, the number of months. This is Annabelle will be able to pay off the loan with the lower monthly payment in five years by setting aside 200 months. Would Annabelle be able to pay off? Oh, derp. I'm making this way more challenging than it is, guys. Oh my gosh. So will Annabelle be able to pay the loan back again? This was way easier. No, because the monthly payments have to be way fat more. She still needs to pay at least that much more a month. So she can't afford the car. I need to learn how to read. Because that one was very simple. I could have just done this and been like, nope, it's a lot more. I do knew why I was thinking that. Because you can see that. It's literally just subtraction. 
All right, suppose she decides to get not get a car after all, and instead she's going to invest this money. So these are two completely different things. I thought they were trying to do calculating it out faster, but they're not. I mean, if Edmentum's having trouble just teaching it this way, I can only assume why they're only doing it this way. So let's go into investments. So let's go into investing. So investments, we are using that formula that I was going to use earlier because this is investing. So let's take a look. So here's that formula. Our principal. So the principal she's going to put down, she's going to put down 200 at the beginning. Uh, into her savings to earn that much and it compounds. Each month in a structured thing. So she's paying that 200 every month. So let's use our formula. So 200. And in case you guys do it. So here's the formula that we're going to use again. And let's see what we have here. So we're going to do SN. So we're going to do our principal. So that's 200. And it's going to be 1 plus the interest. The interest is that much annually, but we have to divide that by 12. So that's going to be, normally it's this, but we divide it by 12. So it ends up being this. And she's going to save it for how much? How many months? Structured for five years. So she's going to invest instead of buying a car. So she's going to invest this. And for five years, but it gets compounded. How often does this get compounded? Monthly. So again, that's 60. To compound that monthly. Compounding just means how many times they're paying that interest. That's the one. And all of this needs to be divided. So I'm just going to highlight this to make it a fraction. And the interest for the month will be 0 0.006. All right. So let's just plug this into the Desmos calculator here. So it's pretty similar to what we did before, except now this is 200, and the formula is a little different. So this will be that 1.006. It gets compounded for 60 months, and we're going to subtract that 1 minus 1, and we're going to divide it by. 0 0.006 and we're gonna get ooh, 40 thousand so she's gonna end up getting a lot of money there for investing it instead and we're gonna round it so that should be it if i understood desmos's instructions correctly that should be it let's take a look and see how accurate i am I was apparently not accurate at all. What did I do wrong now? Oh, they're doing the exact same thing. Wait. No, I did that. Did that. I did. Why did I think six? Oh my gosh. I need to start using a calculator. Let's see here. Po -po -po, points in minus the one divided by that is. Oh my gosh. Why is this so weird? weird. So if she set aside 200 per month with no interest, it would be that much. Oh, this is duh. This is just calculating the interest. 1200. I'm doing the formula right. 
you guys are lucky because you guys get to see me mess up on this and then just learn from my mistakes. So what am I doing here that's wrong? I can't believe it. What I did here that's wrong is I totally forgot a set of parentheses that changes the entire formula. There we go. So that's what I did that's off. Um, you guys can just see the formula. I'm not going to type it in. <laughs> All right, so let's go with this. So Annabelle wants to make the most economical decision. She chooses a three-year loan, so it's a lot cheaper. There's less interest paid off. So Annabelle wants to make the most economic decision, so she chooses the three-year car loan so that after the loan is paid, she'll be able to invest the money. So if Annabelle puts 200 savings each month, with an annual interest rate of that compounded, how much money would she have after two years? So she's gonna invest the money. So we're gonna use the exact same formula, but this time the interest rate is, I'm gonna use the calculator this time, guys, cause apparently I struggle with basic math. Zero, three, two percent, gonna divide that by 12. And oof. Yep, they want to compound that monthly. So I'm going to put 0 0.267, 0 0.00267, just to avoid some of the round off error that we're going to get here. And she wants three years, so that's going to be 36 months. Same amount of time, so we should get 7,546.83. Now let's see if I finally understand this. Mm -hmm. Two years. Victor, come on. Come on. Two years, not three years, man. All right. And on this is I... Struggles. I hate how Desmos, Desmos, I hate how Edmonton has questions. And this is why I'm going to do that Nelson thumbnail, which you guys have already seen. All right. So let's go on to here. As always, guys, read the summary. Um, I made a lot of mistakes in the series of videos, so who knows, I might end up re-recording all of it now that I understand why Desmos is weird. Um, as always, read the watch the videos, hopefully that will help out. Hopefully these videos help out, if anything, to get you guys just past the tutorials. Alright guys, have a good one. Let's see how good this software was.